Hi, this is just a quick tutorial on how to use the sprinkler system calculator. Um, this is the planner tool. So what this is designed to do is to help you come up with a list for sprinklers, for sprinkler parts when you're putting them in. So you got to choose if you're a homeowner or a contractor. I'm going to do the homeowner because there's no need to do the contractors. I'm sure contractors can figure this out. Um, all right, backflow. Will you be needing a backflow preventer? Um, since it is um, law that you have to have one, um, I typically choose pressure vacuum breaker because it's a lot of my area, but you may have to use a RP. Um, all right, so it, so basically all this is doing is you say, yes, I do need a backflow. So I'm clicking on pressure vacuum breaker. I'm going to install one. Um, go over to mainline supply uh, you have to you basically tell it how many gallons per minute you have available I know this site has 12 gallons per minute uh, we are I'm basing it off of this site which is a site that was, I previously installed and um, it'll, it'll be done similar but not exact uh, all right so this if you don't know the gallons per minute there is a tool for that here as well you can go in to tools measure GPM. If you go to measure GPM it will help you to to find your GPM or to learn how to do it. Go back to this. Alright, so we've already got our GPM in, put in. Um, percent used. This is the percentage of the water that you expect to use because your water pressure may vary. It's always a good idea to leave you a little extra so I set it at 80 percent. Um, 55 PSI is default for this um, site and that's actually about where we're at on this site as well or on, on, on the site that we're working on as well uh, mainline size this is the mainline size that's in the ground not the sprinkler size this is the supply, the supply to the property um, in most cases in my area they're three quarter inch and they're typically poly all this does is it gives the program the sizes so that it can tell you the proper components to purchase or at least put, uh, send you in the right direction. Um, we'll say yes we want to install a timer. Um, I am in an area where it freezes so I'm going to need a stop and waste to be able to shut it off for the winter. Uh, number of valve locations. This is for example if you um, have a front and backyard that you're installing. These are the locations for the valve boxes not each individual box so if you have a front and backyard it would likely be two but if you had front back and then a further area that was in the back maybe three it's it really is hard to say it's less accurate the more um, positions or the mo more locations that you uh, click I typically try to stick to one or two all right, hose spigots. This is real common, a great way to be able to get some extra water. Um, I typically put at least one of them on the property unless the homeowner says not to. All right, so this is, apparently I've already clicked this. All right, so so this is what, what you'll come to. It'll, it'll, it'll just say rotor spray drip rotators. Um, in this particular situation, um, let's do three different kinds of heads so you guys understand what, what you're supposed to do here. Um, I'll show you what the property looks like. Okay, we got 48 feet, 25 feet, 8 feet, 25 feet, 80 feet for the whole property, 15 feet here, 30 feet, 25 feet. Okay, so because of those measurements, if I can, come on. Help me out here. Oh, I'm going to the wrong spot. That's why. There we go. All right. Because of those measurements, this this is the layout that I've come up with. So we will do. Um, let, let's do MP rotators for here. Or no, sorry. Do MP rotators for the back. We'll do rotors for the front, and we'll do spray heads for the side here. Um, I think that'll give us a halfway decent coverage. I know we could do the whole thing in either. Um, or in AMP rotators, but we, we won't do that because we want to give you guys a better idea of how the system works. Okay, so we'll cover that one up for now so that we, we know we're just working with this one. Um, let's do the rotors first, which will be the front yard. 
um, you don't have to click front and back it just assumes for you uh, we will click yes we do want rotors um, here oh I guess I can't hide that because we need to know the, the feet okay so here we have one two three four five six rotors and they need to shoot 25 feet to be able to get this coverage so the 25 feet will shoot from here to here oops sorry here to here so to be able to get this coverage as you can see right here now you'll, you'll basically have to have six in configuration to be able to get the best coverage so we're going to go with down here we'll find we can go with actually this is the number one or the nozzle that is one for 5,000 is uh, at 25 feet but we probably want to put out a little bit more than that so we can reduce our times so it looks like we will have to use this is probably the best one in this situation 24 feet we could do 27 and knock it down but we won't have as good a spray pattern so we'll go with this this particular head and we will add six of them okay so now let's move on to the side of the house spray heads yes we will be installing spray heads now you could do you could go on and do the entire property with just well you can't do it with rotors because these are eight feet but if it was in a configuration that you could use all rotors you could do all the entire property on just one type of head if you wanted to so we're now in spray heads we know we have to go eight feet here and we have one two three four quarters and one two three four halves and these are set up in quarters three quarter full and half because each of them are set up as a different flow rating so we go down until we find as you can see here's eight feet ten feet um, 15 feet sorry these are eight feet to ten feet I, I didn't I didn't say that um, five feet to eight feet um, typically in a situation like this you don't want to go to 10 feet because you're against a house so you would go with the eight footers um, or the up to eight footers so we know we need one two three four of the corner heads and one two three four of the half heads and that makes up this whole side here and now let's go to the back and we'll do MP rotators for this uh, this this does also allow you to, to do drip. Um, let's just go over that real quick, but I won't click on it. Um, here you have linear feet. That's the size of the uh, the area that you're going to cover. Um, if you if you have multiple boxes like garden boxes, you'll basically it's just a, a linear footage um, number of areas. So if you have an area here, an area here, an area here, it would be three. Um, we're obviously not adding those um, and then these these are just the type of heads or not heads But emitters that you'll be putting in based by volume um, It'll be written on the package or you should be at least somewhat familiar with what you'd like to use um, This will add 10 at a time this Helps you not to have to hit the button 150 times for a standard property you can then hit it 15 times and you add that many heads um, the volume is so low that you can we can get away with that um, all right since we're not using them uh, we'll just click away from that and we'll go to the rotators okay rotators in this situation it is also set up like the spray heads with the quarter half three quarter full so we're looking at this and we have 31 feet and 25 feet so the layout for this was using the 25 feet so we want we want MP rotators that will shoot 25 feet so we know we have one two three four half heads and 22 to 30 feet what else okay I see these only go to 21 feet so we don't want to use those so we will go with the sorry quarter heads one two three four um, we have one, two, three, four half heads. That's right here. One, two, three, four half heads. And we have one full. Okay, now that all the heads have been input, um, 
Oh, here you can add sprinklers if you want to use something that is not. These are just Rainbird and Hunter products at this point. Um, right now it's just on the website is just um, uh, the heads that I use most commonly because everything hasn't been entered. But you can um, put in your specific type of sprinkler, the radius and the GPM. You have to select what it is and then you can add your own sprinklers that way. Um, it's a little more tedious, but you can become more specific that way. Um, okay, so here we are now set up. It tells you your system parameters. You selected 12 feet, uh, sorry, 12 gallons per minute. Uh, mainline velocity, um, it, since you're using a three-quarter inch main to the property, or since there is one, it's letting you know that the three-quarter inch line is, go, is, is running 5.81 feet per second. Um, that could cause some water hammer. Um, it's uh, you need to decide for yourself whether or not you would like to reduce this 12 feet or 12 gallons per minute down to drop this below five feet per second. Um, in this case, where I'm at, I'm going to leave it, even though it's manufacturer's recommendation is to keep it below five feet per second. That's what this warning is right here. Um, Okay, total gallons for irrigation, this is what we're allowing ourselves, is um, 9.6 gallons per minute. Uh, let's see, um, four, four total stations are what we're going to need. Um, four num number of valves are four. Um, it, this also gives you an estimate for PVC. Uh, total valve locations and spigots. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but we'll give you a real quick overview here of what it shows. Um, your your pop-ups, how much you're using for your spray heads is, is 4 gallons per minute. That's why you only need one zone. MP rotators are using 16, so you need two zones. And the rotors are using 8.9, so you're using one zone. So this, this property, that makes it to where it has four total zones. Now here's where you get your list, and you can customize it. Um, in this situation, when I typically install, I use gray glue for my main lines and blue glue for my laterals. It helps me distinguish what I'm working with, uh, as well as the blue glue is faster, but the gray glue, um, in my opinion, works better for, uh, for doing the main lines, uh, even though rating, they both have the same rating. Um, anyway, if you decide that you want it different, let's say you nah, we don't you, you don't want to use gray glue, you can add and subtract to change these numbers, so that you no longer ha are purchasing the one you do not want. Um, but this this also goes through like for example, if you don't use pipe dope or you already have it on your truck, which most people that are installers already have it. Um, anyway, go through and, and tailor this to what you want. It'll tell you everything that you need for for. Well, it'll tell you the most likely parts that you will need to install this entire system. Now, you can go through and say, you know what, I I think I don't need specific items. I'm not going to use, well, I mean, you're obviously going to use the three-quarter inch slip tees, but you can adjust up or down, or, you know, maybe you use more than most people. If you want to have a few extra on hand, you can add. Um, you Oh, real quick, you can calculate your parts estimate. This will tell you um, $1,700 for these parts at 100% of retail. 100% of retail is a bit high. Um, it's typically around 80% in most locations where I find them. 70 to 80%. A contractor gets a little bit of a break, but not much. Um, a homeowner will probably spend the 80% where a contractor will spend likely spend the 70% to get their parts. Um, you can just select it so that you can uh, uh, see approximately how much you're going to spend for your parts. It, it's made to estimate high and I hope that it uh, stays true with all that's going on with COVID. Um, all right, get my list. Now this is a printable, printable PDF view of the same thing. Um, it puts the parameters down here because it's assuming that you'll be at the parts house having to to input all this. Um, now this is a little bug having these at ad these added into your PDF. They used to not be there, but I haven't had that fixed yet. Hopefully in the future it'll be fixed. Um, but if you want to print this off, you can click print and simply print off this version or if you're using a mobile device, you can save it as a PDF and save. 
there we go. Now that I can call that back at any time if I'd like to. Okay, that was just a quick tutorial. I guess it wasn't so quick on how to uh, um, utilize this um, program to be able to install a sprinkler system, and, or at least to get your parts, save you time and money. Thank you.